ride too? You want to go riding? Hey, what's up, chitheads? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to be taking the Ghost Cat F3X out. This is Ghost Cat's newest offering. It's basically an upgraded version of the F3. It's got a better front fork, uh, upgraded headlight, you know, a couple little things here and there. And all in all, we're just gonna go ahead and terrorize the town and have a good time. But anyways, guys, it's enough small talk. What do you say we get going? Come on, let's go. All right, guys, we are out on the Ghost Cat F3X. And first thing I noticed about this bike it's to me, maybe I'm tainted point of view because I'm so used to uh, reviewing other e-bikes that are heavier. This bike feels super light and uh, it's not. It's 83 pounds, but I have no problem lifting this bike up and moving it around. And with these uh, street tires on this bike, this thing is like super nimble. This is probably the most nimble bike I've ridden. And this is fun to just zip around on so far. I don't have a ton of miles. I have like 17 miles. The brakes on this bike feel ridiculous. I'm not really familiar with this brand, but boy, do these things have a, a great initial bite. I'm guessing it's the, uh, the material they're using in the brake pad or something, but this thing, yeah. <laughs> this thing has ridiculously strong brakes. Another thing I'm noticing right away, unfortunately, I'm riding with polarized glasses now, and it is unfortunately blocks my view of the display. So if I tilt my head left or right a little bit, I can read the display, but straight up down, at least with my glasses, I'm having a hard time reading the display. I love the tire screeching, guys. To me, that's almost worth the price of entry on this bike alone. It is so fun to go around screeching that rear wheel and uh, getting people's reactions. It's pretty fun, it's pretty entertaining, guys. Call me immature if you want, but I happen to really enjoy that. Unfortunately though, it brings up another thing. Uh, this bike doesn't have a horn. I know the F3 has a horn. The horns are part of the headlights on these. And since this has a different headlight, there's no horn. I also enjoy hitting the horn at the same time I lock up the tires. So that's that. Uh, Ghost Cat did tell me a couple things right off the bat and I'm already noticing it. The kickstand that's on this bike now does rattle around and make some noise. We said they're going to be redesigning the kickstand and sending out new ones if you request. And the front fender on this bike is being redesigned and they're going to be sending out a new one as well. I personally didn't even bother putting it on this bike at all. So let's see how it skids on dirt. <laughs> okay, that was fun. So yeah, usually there's gonna be a fender that goes right out the back here. I didn't put it on, I don't really like the look of it. So I'll be interested to see what the new one looks like when it's redesigned. This thing is like a really compact little bike. I like it. I live on the second floor of an apartment. A lot of my bikes are heavy. I do not look forward to dragging them up and down the stairs. This bike right here is light and I have no problem moving this one up and down. Taking the ghost cat up the stairs, no problem. So I have a feeling in the future, I'm just gonna go somewhere quick, I'll probably grab this bike. So this bike here, I'm six foot two and the pedaling is like comical. How uh, this bike is ergonomic for somebody that's probably uh, four foot one, maybe. So pedaling is pretty much an afterthought on this bike. So I do really pretty much just get this bike. If I'm gonna be throttling around, I'm not gonna be pedaling, which is fine. You know, this bike is uh, what it is. I, I kind of feel like this bike is a little urban assault vehicle. You get on this bike and you just go terrorize the streets because this bike also has a street tread tire, whereas the Ghost Cat F3 has a knobby tread. They call this tire a dual sport tire. Honestly, I don't know what sports, baseball or football maybe, 
Well, honestly, I don't think uh, I wouldn't be doing anything too crazy on the off-road front with these tires. This bike is leading the pack in uh, smiles per minute so far. <laughs> the suspension's great. This front fork has 120 millimeters of travel. The one that comes on the F3, I believe, is 80 millimeters of travel. And honestly, guys, if you've ridden many of these 20-inch moped bikes, uh, a lot of the suspension that comes on them is absolute garbage. So this is a DNM Volcano. It's got preload and rebound adjustments. This is a nice little shock. So far, I like it. The rear shock is a DNM as well, and uh, so far it's okay, guys. I am on the heavier end of riders. So I had to comp my compression all the way up, and if you see here, I had to compress this spring down quite a bit because what was happening, when I was hitting large enough bumps, this rear controller box here was touching the rear tire. So uh, I'm 250 pounds. You guys might not have that issue, but for me, I had to crank up the compression and the uh, preload on this shock quite a bit to get it to not hit that. Feels pretty torquey. It's a 52 volt, uh, 50 amp controller. And I'm noticing here on display, it's putting out about 1700 watts, 1800 watts on the routine as soon as you hit the throttle. Another thing I'm noticing too with the pedal assist setup on this bike, it's kind of funny because like I mentioned before, the pedal assist isn't the best because your pedaling is very not ergonomic. But it feels like the throttle gives you full power pretty much in every pedal assist setting you go to. It just raises or lowers your speed maximum. So I find myself in this bike, I'm pretty much just in PAS5 the whole time and I ride this like it's throttle only. I might pedal just a little bit, but Let's be honest, it's not really doing too much. This is a, one of the things I like about this little urban assault vehicle though. We can go upstairs on it. <laughs> nice. The thing I'm noticing as I'm riding this bike around is the controller is kind of just making noise rattling around. And that's due to the fact that it's just sitting inside of this plastic box here and there's nothing securing it to the box. So it's kind of just rattling around. I don't think that's gonna break anything, but I'm actually gonna be taking the seat off later and seeing if I can do something to address that because I don't like hearing rattles when I ride around. Just a reminder here, this is a class two, 750 watt, 20 mile an hour pedal assist e-bike, okay? Don't get any ideas. Uh, don't mind him, he's just taking a nap. I feel like I'm riding a little Emoto bike. That's exactly what this feels like. This feels like an Emoto that's not quite as fast and not quite as uh, much suspension as the bigger ones like this guy who keeps following me around has. But yeah, you know, this thing feels fun. It's like a little urban bombing machine. And as a matter of fact, that's what we're gonna keep doing. Let's do a little top speed run while we're on the way. I think these things are rated about 35 miles an hour. Keep in mind, guys, I'm on the heavier side and I rarely hit those advertised speeds, but I'm doing 33 right now. 33.8 and we had to come to a stop but yeah this thing's pretty quick torquey off the line there he is this bike's just a lot of fun uh, however there's going to be some downsides since you're not pedaling and this has a 52 volt 20 amp hour battery which is about a thousand watt hours of capacity you're not going to be able to go too incredibly far I, I would guess you know because you're pretty much going to be throttling the whole time you could probably get a range of about 20, 25 miles, but we'll see. These little things, they give you this little Rock Brothers bag here. And this reminds me of like a fanny pack that, you know, like those real alpha males wear, you know, because anybody knows anything, alpha male always wears a fanny pack. But while you're riding a bike, maybe you don't want your fanny pack on you, you just put it on your bike instead. And that's what this is. And it's got this little front holder here for your phone. As you can see, I haven't tried it yet, but guys, look, I'm a creature of habit. I will work my way up to attempting to use my phone in here. But it is nice that they give you a little bit of uh, storage space on this bike for no extra cost. <laughs> Guys, I just want to point out, every time I get the new bike these days, I put flat out in the tires, and this is why. Look at this. Those are all goat heads. So trust me guys, put flat out in your tires. It does wonders against small p things penetrating the tires like this. That's what she said. <laughs> but maybe you're lucky and don't live in an area that has goat heads like that. Yeah, I'm really liking the look and feel of this seat. It's a bit firm, but overall it just feels like a really nice quality seat. I'm really liking the look of this bike, especially from this angle back here. It looks aggressive, nice little, uh, 
This is a miniature motorcycle. That's cool looking, isn't it? It's a cool looking little bike. Anyways, let's get back on the trail. Dipping along 32, 33, 34 miles an hour. We're just cooking right along, fellas. Oh, we better stop for the street here. Can never be too safe. Oh, there's something else I needed to do here. Oh, that's right, I need to go to the Dollar Tree. Need to get some gas. Guys, it sucks. I just did a double backside gainer off this wall and I forgot to hit record, but you just have to take my word for it. Hey, can we ride together? <laughs> We're friends now. See, that's half the fun of riding bikes, guys, is meeting friends along the way. All right, it's time for a little bit of a hill test here on the F3X. This isn't the steepest hill in the world, but it's a fairly steep hill. A hill you definitely wouldn't want to be riding up on a traditional acoustic bike. As you can see, the MX-4 has no problem with it. And we're, we're getting it done on the Ghost Cat. We're doing 19.6 miles an hour. It'll climb hills. Uh-oh, we need to stop here. This is a really steep hill. Let's see how it does. It's already struggling. I'm going to be pedaling a little bit up this one. Downshift, I think this is the first time I've actually downshift on the Ghost Cat. We're getting it done, guys. The uh, camera probably won't do this justice, but this is an extremely steep hill here. Oh yeah. It's getting the job done with minimal input on my part. Light. Easy to pick up, easy to maneuver, and I appreciate that. By the way, this is what the six foot two rider looks like on the Ghost Cat, and this is the ridiculous pedal stroke of a six foot two rider on the Ghost Cat F3X. So there you have it, it's our initial ride in the books on the Ghost Cat F3X. So far, I really like this bike. It's light at 83 pounds. It's easy for me to move up and down the stairs. I absolutely love the street tread on the tires. As you can probably tell if you watched the video, I'm gonna have a lot of fun riding this around, terrorizing the neighborhoods. And uh, guys, if you're interested in purchasing a Ghost Cat F3X, you can use the link in the description of this video. Use coupon code shoot the chit to save yourself $100 off this beautiful bike right here. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Here he is. This is me using the kickstand on the Ghost Cat. And this is me waiting for the cameraman to stop recording because this is getting awkward. Any day now. <laughs>